Welcome to today's podcast, where we discuss a significant advancement in trauma care, low titer type O whole blood transfusion. This approach represents a paradigm shift in the management of hemorrhagic shock, streamlining resuscitation efforts for critically injured patients, where every second counts. Okay, so, ready to dive into something kind of mind-blowing. We're tackling trauma care today, but hold on, because what you're about to hear might make you question everything you thought you knew about it. Oh, absolutely. This is one of those topics that really makes you step back and go, wait, we've been doing what for the past 50 years? Seriously, it's like we took a wrong turn somewhere and just kept driving for decades. <laughs> So our listeners sent over a bunch of stuff about whole blood transfusions, specifically for trauma. And, um, well, let's just say it sounds like a total game changer. It really is. You know, for the longest time, the go-to for trauma patients, especially those with severe bleeding, has been saline solution. Saline solution? You mean like salty water? Pretty much. It's uh -huh. a bit more complex than that, of course. Yeah. But essentially, we've been relying on this very basic solution as the first line of defense against major blood loss. Which, now that you mention it, seems kind of crazy, right? Like, if you told someone outside of medicine that's how we treat life-threatening injuries, they'd probably think you were pulling their leg. I know, right? But it's been the standard of care for so long that it's just become ingrained in medical practice. So what finally made everyone pump the brakes and say, hold on, maybe we need something a little more heavy-duty than salty 5e drips? Well, over the past couple of decades, there's been this growing understanding of what actually happens inside the body during severe trauma. Think of it like this. When your body experiences a major injury, especially with significant blood loss, it loses its ability to naturally stop the bleeding and transport oxygen effectively. Basically, your internal systems go haywire. Okay, that makes sense. Our bodies are freaking out because they're like, help, something's wrong. Exactly. And what's fascinating is that whole blood not just saline with a few added components, but actual complete blood essentially gives your body everything it needs to jumpstart those vital functions again. Mm. So it's like hitting the reset button, but with the good stuff our bodies are actually wired to use. Precisely. It's like comparing a quick fix with duct tape to actually repairing the structure with the right materials. That's a great analogy. Whole blood contains all those crucial elements. Clotting factors, red blood cells for oxygen. Yeah. It's basically mimicking what the body naturally needs in a crisis. And this isn't just some abstract medical theory, right? This is literally translating into lives being saved as we speak. One of the videos you sent mentioned a study that showed a 20 times higher survival rate when whole blood was given within 30 minutes of injury. That's, I, I don't even have words. It's a staggering statistic. Right. Right. And it, it really highlights the fact that this isn't just about tweaking medical procedures. We're talking about fundamentally changing how we approach trauma care. Absolutely. And from what I'm gathering, this isn't just a small scale thing either. You're saying this could potentially impact millions of people around the world. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. We're talking about a global health issue here. Trauma related deaths are a leading cause of mortality worldwide, with numbers exceeding the population of many countries. Wow. It's easy to get lost in the statistics sometimes, but those numbers represent real people, real families. It's heavy stuff. It really is. And you know, you mentioned car accidents being a major contributor to these statistics, especially for young children. And as a parent, that just that hits close to home. It's a tragic reality. And what's even more concerning is the shift we're seeing in the leading cause of trauma death for children here in the U.S. Oh, you're talking about firearm injuries. They've now surpassed car accidents as the number one cause. Wow. That that's just heartbreaking. And it makes this whole conversation about advancements in trauma care feel even more urgent, you know? It really does. And while we're not going to get into the political complexities surrounding that particular issue today, I think the data speaks for itself. We need to be doing everything we can to improve survival rates for these traumatic injuries. And this whole blood approach seems to be a significant step in the right direction. Okay, so we're talking about life or death here. And sometimes it takes more than just statistics to really drive the point home. One of the videos you sent featured Dr. Peter Antivy, an EMS medical director who was actually on the scene at the Parkland shooting. I mean, that's, I can't even imagine. It's hard to even fathom what those first responders went through that day. Dr. Antivy has been a tireless advocate for whole blood ever since, and his firsthand experience carries a weight that's hard to ignore. 
you can just hear the passion in his voice when he talks about it. You know, mm. it's not just about the science for him. It's about the human cost of these tragedies. Absolutely. And we're seeing that passion translate into real world action. Cities like San Antonio have already implemented whole blood programs with incredible results. So we're talking about entire cities shifting their entire approach to trauma care. That's massive. What kind of real world impact are we actually seeing when we put this into practice? Well, take San Antonio, for instance. They've seen a huge drop in those early mortality rates for trauma patients mm -hmm. since they brought in their whole blood program. And we're not talking about tiny improvements here. This is making a serious difference. That's amazing. It really drives home the point that this isn't some theoretical medical breakthrough stuck in a lab somewhere. It's actually changing people's lives right now. Exactly. And it's not just happening in San Antonio. You mentioned New Orleans earlier. Right. With their program. They launched theirs back in 2021, and their chief medical officer has directly linked it to a decrease in the city's murder rate. Wait, seriously? A medical intervention that's actually making a dent in the murder rate? That's incredible. Talk about a ripple effect. It's pretty remarkable, right? <laughs> But it highlights how deeply interconnected trauma care is with so many other aspects of our society. Absolutely. But let's zoom in on those New Orleans results even further, because one of the studies you sent zeroed in on 21 patients there who got whole blood. And get this, they were getting that blood within 10 minutes on average. That's unbelievably fast. It has to be fast. Every minute counts in those situations. And here's the real kicker. 14 out of those 21 patients, they not only survived, but they recovered well enough to go home. We're not talking about barely clinging to life. We're talking about going back to their families, their lives. It's a real testament to just how effective this whole blood approach can be. And it brings up something that doesn't get enough attention when we talk about medical interventions, quality of life. Mm -hmm. What's the point of surviving if you can't actually recover and live a good life afterward? That's such an important point. Okay, so we've got the science backing this up. We've got these amazing stories coming out of places like San Antonio and New Orleans. But I have to imagine there are challenges, right? I mean, overhauling an entire system like this can't be easy. So what are some of the hurdles in making whole blood transfusions the standard of care for trauma? You're absolutely right. Big changes always come with their own set of challenges. And in this case, a lot of them come down to logistics. Logistics meaning? Well, think about things like blood type. Yes. You specifically asked about O positive versus O negative and why they're going with O positive when O negative is often seen as that universal donor. Yeah, I have to admit that one really threw me for a loop. I mean, if O negative works for anyone, why not just use that exclusively? It seems logical, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, O negative blood is surprisingly rare. Only about 7% of the population has it. Oh, wow. I had no idea. Yeah. And O positive is way more common, like around 40% of people have that type. So it's a numbers game. Exactly. Plus, when they're using O positive blood for these transfusions, they're using these special units called low titer units. Low titer. Now, what in the world does that mean? Basically, it means that they've got very low levels of those antibodies that can sometimes cause bad reactions in people with different blood types. So it's like a safer version of O positive that can be used more widely. You got it. Larger pool of potential donors, lower risk of complications. It just makes a lot more sense for these emergency situations. That's actually really clever. OK, but even with that figured out, there's still the cost, the storage and just getting hospitals on board with this whole new way of doing things. All valid concerns. Absolutely. Whole blood doesn't last as long as some other blood products. So hospitals need to be really on top of their inventory. Plus, you've got the training aspect. Medical professionals need to know the specific protocols for whole blood because it's different from working with saline or other fluids. So it's not just about convincing hospitals that whole blood works. It's about giving them the tools and support to actually make it happen. Exactly. And that's where partnerships come in. OK, so who's stepping up to make these partnerships a reality? Well, there are some great organizations doing amazing work in this area, like the Southwest Texas Regional Advisory Council or S3 for short. They're providing guidance to hospitals that are looking to implement whole blood programs, helping them navigate all the logistics and training challenges. So there's like a roadmap in place, which is encouraging. There is. And they're proving these challenges aren't insurmountable. It's not always easy, but the results speak for themselves. They really do. So we've got the blood supply somewhat figured out. We've got groups like STRAC lending a helping hand to hospitals. But what about the research side of things? Anything in the works there that's got you particularly fired up? Oh, absolutely. One of the most exciting areas right now is the development of standardized protocols for whole blood transfusions. 
So you're talking about creating like a clear set of guidelines that any medical professional can follow no matter where they are or what kind of resources they have available? That's the idea. And it goes beyond just the when and how of giving whole blood. We're also talking about data collection. Data collection. Wow. So tracking the outcomes of these transfusions to see what works best. Exactly. Dr. Juan Dishesny over at Tulane University has actually started a national blood registry to track whole blood transfusion outcomes across the entire country. No way! A national registry? That's huge! It is. It's all about gathering that large-scale data to figure out the best practices, identify potential issues, and basically make the strongest possible argument for whole blood as the standard of care. It makes perfect sense the more data we have, the better equipped we are to advocate for real change. You got it. And it's not just advocating to other medical professionals. It's about reaching policymakers, insurance companies, everyone who has a say in our healthcare system. So it's about connecting the dots between the science, the success stories, and the policy changes that need to happen to make this the norm. Exactly. Right. And that's where raising public awareness comes in. The more people understand how important this is, the more pressure those decision makers will feel to prioritize it. Okay, so we've covered a lot of ground, the science, the challenges, the potential solutions. It's crystal clear that this whole blood thing has the potential to completely revolutionize trauma care. But before we move on, I want to circle back to something you touched on earlier, those logistical hurdles. Let's say someone's listening to this and they're thinking, I'm on board with this whole blood thing. What can I actually do to help make this a reality? What would you tell them? Love that attitude. Honestly, you've already hit on one of the most impactful things, spreading awareness. The more people who get what we're talking about here, the more support there'll be for these programs. So sharing this episode is a good first step. Absolutely. But also think back to those community blood drives we talked about. That's another way to make a real difference. It's easy to forget that something as simple as donating blood can literally save lives, especially with these whole blood programs becoming more common. Totally. Donating blood, it feels like one of those small acts, but when you zoom out, it's huge. Exactly. And beyond that, stay informed, ask questions, talk to people, be an advocate for change in your own community. I love that. It's a team effort. We all have a role to play in shaping the future of healthcare. Couldn't agree more. That's what's so exciting about this. We're not just talking about a medical breakthrough here. We're talking about a societal shift towards truly prioritizing trauma care. Well said. It really feels like we're on the verge of something incredible here. You know, as fascinating as this all is, something's been kind of nagging at me this whole time. Oh, yeah. What's that? We keep talking about whole blood like it's this magical solution, but nothing lasts forever, right? How long does that magic actually hold up? I vaguely remember one of the videos mentioning something about platelets and how they're affected by cold storage. Ah, you're bringing up a crucial point. Whole blood isn't a cure-all. It does have limitations. And one of the biggies is the shelf life of those platelets. Okay, so back up for a sec. Platelets, those are the tiny guys that help our blood clot, right? Exactly. Essential for stopping bleeding. But they're also pretty darn fragile. Unlike red blood cells, which can chill in cold storage for a while, platelets start to lose their mojo after just a few days. So it's like a ticking clock from the moment that blood is donated. You could say that. And wow. that's why those logistical systems we talked about earlier, those are so crucial. Got to make sure that donated whole blood is used as efficiently as possible, getting to those who need it before those platelets throw in the towel. So it's a balancing act, having enough ready to go, but not letting any of it go to waste. Exactly. And this is actually where research is making some exciting strides. Scientists are always on the hunt for ways to make those platelets last longer in cold storage, maybe even extend the shelf life of whole blood. Wow, that'd be a game changer. No doubt. Just goes to show how much we're still learning and improving in this field. But even with the limitations we have now, the benefits of whole blood, they're impossible to ignore. No argument there. It's like witnessing a revolution in trauma care firsthand. Pretty remarkable when you think about it. It really is. And it's bigger than just the immediate impact on patients. It's got the potential to completely reshape the system as a whole. Couldn't agree more. Ed. Well, I guess that about wraps up our deep dive into the world of whole blood transfusions. It's been quite a journey. Honestly, I feel like my brain is overflowing with new information. It's been a pleasure exploring all of this with you. And remember, knowledge is power, especially when it comes to our health. So true. To all our listeners out there, we hope this deep dive has been insightful and empowering. We've armed you with knowledge. Now go out there and be a part of the solution. Thanks for joining us on the deep dive. And until next time, stay curious. 
Thank you for watching. Please subscribe to our channel by clicking the subscription button. If you have any questions, feel free to leave a comment below in the comment section.